when you start QBA 7.52, uh, you will be faced with this project assistance screen. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen are templates uh, for recent recording, scoring, production, mastering, and more. Um, there's some nice templates here for recording. However, I prefer to do my own template for songwriting. So I slide over to more and hit empty. However, before you do that, you want to uh, check the prompt for project location. You want to do this because it will, it will let you know exactly where you've placed that, that, uh, that file. And it also gives you a chance to name it in, in a way that is logical to you. All right, once you've done that and clicked the empty, you'll be faced with an empty screen. And the first thing you want to do is go up to the, the drop-down menu and hit Project and then Add Tracks. Under Add Track, uh, it has a listing of different things that you can add, audio, instrument, uh, group channels, markers. We're going to do with the audio first. Now, uh, you'll be then hit reach this pop-up screen. I usually choose mono, and I usually choose about nine or ten audio tracks. Uh, for my template. Now, once each of these is created, I, I then go ahead and uh, modify that track. Now, for my first track, I usually create a, a track for a guitar part. And when I do that, I usually uh, put under the insert channel an amplifier, and usually it's uh, IK Multimedia's Amplitude. And my personal choice is usually a Fender Twin Reverb, which can go either dirty or, or fairly clean. So it gives me a, a decent palette to work with. Um, following, uh, after I get that set up, um, then I will name the track uh, Scratch Rhythm Guitar. And that's because I don't know what I'm going to do with it. However, I know I'm not going to end up keeping very much of it, if any at all. And it's, it'll be adjacent to what I will then name um, uh, rhythm, rhythm Guitar Track, which if there's parts of the other one I like, I'll pull them straight down into that track. And it'll have a, an amplifier on that one also. And usually, uh, I don't usually determine which amp it's going to be at that point. Uh, it depends on the song. Um, and then I name that one Rhythm uh, Guitar. And then I follow that particular track up with the lead vocal, which I modify also at the insert point. Uh, usually I add a decent compressor, and uh, in this case, I'm just going to use uh, Steinberg's um, presets. Steinberg has pretty good presets for quick and dirty recording, and for songwriting, it, it's pretty good as far as... Uh, pulling up a, a nice sound for you to work with. It's kind of inspiring to your performance. All right, once I get that set up, I, oh, I also add a reverb to um, my vocal scratch track. And once again, it's all about uh, creating an environment of creativity, and part of that for me, as far as singing a vocal, is having a decent reverb. Um, and usually it's, I use Revelation, which is kind of, um, not really a, a great reverb, but it's good enough to, to get inspired for the uh, writing process. All right, after I get that done, then I go ahead and name that one Scratch Lead Vocal. And this is really important because there are certain parts of a vocal that, uh, or a melody line that I really like, and I go ahead and record that and pull it down to the adjacent track, which is usually called lead vocal. And it's also a scratch vocal, but it's, it's also part of the writing process for me. If there's something I really like in what I uh, wrote, I will cut it off the scratch track and drag it right down to the adjacent track, which is going to be the vocal uh, track, which essentially, in a sense, it's still a scratch track because it's, it's still in the writing process. But I also add to that second vocal track um, a send effect to, to delay so I can have a, a better idea as, as how this melody is going to work based on how I normally uh, record vocals and keep them in place. And I, and I add a compressor to it and a few other things to give it a more finished sound, though I probably won't keep that particular vocal, but it gives me an idea of where it lies in comparison to uh, 
the scratch, the scratch vocal. These kind of things really do help in your creative process because it gives you uh, some, something to, in, to inspire you as far as a sound. As a guitarist, a great sounding guitar usually inspires my writing process. Okay, now this is how you add, add the uh, delay sends. Um, and I add the delay, usually a stereo delay. And I, oops, I made it a mono, which I shouldn't have done. Well, let me go ahead and just set up this. And I can always change that later. Um, usually I put the mix all the way up to 100 because this is going to be a return. Okay, you want to do that, that. All right, um, just a few more tweaks here. Make the pans so they are equal to each other somewhat. And bring the EQs up and down. And, oh, uh, I think I forgot something. Yeah, I did. All right, um, I need to go back. Make that a pre-fader. And I need to go back because I didn't... I didn't uh, add... Uh, ay, ay, ay. All right, here's my delay. And click that so it returns to my vocal track. All right. And let's find the vocal track. That's not it. That's not it. This is also why you want to do this is name things because it makes it easier to find them later. All right. All right once that's complete, I'll go ahead and rename some of these other tracks so we can speed this along. With bass tracks, it's the same thing as I did with the guitar tracks. Uh, there's a scratch bass and a regular bass and a regular guitar and other guitar or scratch guitar and other guitar, <clears throat> which I do the same thing. I record on the scratch and then drag over the parts to the adjacent track that I, that I like. And of course, you have to add an amplifier to it, which is, once again, IK Multimedia. All right. Okay, everything looks good. Go ahead, create the other track, other guitar track. All right, and add an amplifier to that. Now you don't actually have to add an amplifier to these other tracks. I do because I just I'm pulling things over from adjacent tracks uh, to make room for my recording on the other one. I don't want to waste a lot of tracks um, on things that I'm going to I'm going to ultimately end up getting rid of. Um, this is the writing process. This is not. Uh, the actual recording of a song process. It's the This is set up for me to get my ideas down quickly before they pass into the great beyond. All right, so the next step is I usually add uh, a few instruments, usually a MIDI drum uh, and a uh, MIDI key uh, keyboard, usually a piano sound. Now I usually uh, set this up through the instrument channel on Cubase. Now this is a little bit different than in some other DAWs. However, um, you need to consult your particular DAWs manual as to how to go about doing this. But I'm not one of those people who likes to use a click track. I prefer to have a drum to uh, give me the rhythm so that I can understand uh, where I'm at in the song and how the song is, is coming together and keeps me playing in time. So I use Jamsticks 3 and I usually set it up to feed uh, Superior Drummer MIDI uh, so I have a nice drum sound. Ultimately what these uh, drums brains are, are going to create is probably not going to be something I'm going to keep. It's primarily for me to keep time and to inspire me as far as the songwriting process. Oftentimes what I started out with for, for drums uh, the writing process end up being trashed for something more appropriate to the song style and genre that I'm that I'm working on. All right, we got uh, 
tune track superior drummer setup. Now, I also add uh, to my uh, instrument group, I also add um, a keyboard or a piano sound. Uh, I do this primarily because I don't always uh, want to write on guitar. Every now and then I feel the need I need to write something on a piano. And contact uh, uh, allows me to do that. And by setting that up uh, in my template, it gives me the opportunity to be able to do that. And it's already set there, the tools are there. And this is part of, the, of why you set up a template is to have the tools available while you're writing a song without having to stop and set them up as you go. This is one of the big advantages that DAWs have over hardware-based um, workstations. You can create the tools or put the tools in place as you're writing or before you're writing that, that you may use as you're writing without having to stop and recalibrate your workspace or your workflow. Okay, so now you've got uh, enough audio channels and MIDI channels to uh, put together a song. There's a few other things that I like to add to that uh, make my workflow a little easier. Uh, one of those things I like to do is uh, I like to add um, toward the bottom or somewhere lower in the in lower middle, I like to add another uh, uh, timeline. Um, and the reason for that is I don't like coming cursoring and scrolling all over the place trying to find out what, what measure I am at. And sometimes the, uh, the transport bar is obscured. So by doing that, I, I create a, a way to be able to know where that's at. Next, I like to create a tempo track. Now, a tempo track is something that I use uh, to sometimes create a better, a more human feel to what I'm working on. Uh, for instance, sometimes I, I like to start a song at, say, 60 beats per measure, and by the first verse, I like to have it up to about 100 beats per measure. And then you can basically go ahead and write those into uh, your, your tempo track. Of course, you can do that. You don't have to do that at all, but you can later add those in. But the fact that it's there gives me an opportunity to use that if I feel the need to use it. Once again, you're putting the tools in place for your use if you need them or if you want them. Uh, the next thing I put in is the part that I find the most important as far as the songwriting process. And that is adding, um, is adding a marker track. Now marker tracks are what I call uh, song structure tracks. Though they were created for transport for ease of transport, that is finding things in your, in your song. Uh, it also works as a nice structure tool. Uh, most pop songs are eight or 16 measures for verses or choruses. Um, so what I do is I set up a marker track at uh, say nine and create another marker track at say 17 and say I will name uh, the marker track at, at say eight first verse and then marker track at 17 as chorus. So that's eight measures for chorus and eight measures for verse. Um, and then following that eight, uh, eight measures of chorus, I'll put another marker at say 25 to show that that's the end of the chorus. And that gives me a verse and a chorus to work on writing. And, and, and at that point, it's easier to move those things around or to just work on that section. Usually I loop uh, a section from uh, uh, say 17 to 25 as my chorus because I like to work on choruses first. That's usually the heart of the song I work on. Um, and by doing that, I at that point have a chorus in place that I can write a verse going into it or a verse coming out of it. Uh, something that on cassette was almost impossible to do without using a razor blade. Um, this gives more flexibility to you as a writer. You could do it literally, that is start from the very beginning and go to the end. Um, although I find it easier to write a song from sections and then putting them together 
especially when you have the courses in place. The course is the big part, and if I get the course right, uh, I can usually work my way through the through the verses. And when I go back to play it from say uh, marker seven through twenty-five, it sounds like uh, is is it complete or is it not complete? Does it flow nicely? It's easier to see. Okay, um, so once you get these things all in place. That is your, your, your audio tracks and your tempo tracks and your marker tracks and your MIDI tracks. Uh, then at, at that point, you can go back and probably color the tracks. Now, I do this primarily for because I, I'm kind of absent minded. And sometimes I, for, I don't actually look at the, the words on the track, or what it's named, and I should. And sometimes it's just too small and I'm not wearing my glasses and I can't see it. However, when they are colored, uh, you definitely notice uh, what a track is. Okay, now you can go in at that point and save the as a template, and ask you to name that template. And when you name that template, uh, name it something like songwriting template or. Uh, template for songwriting for metal song or songwriting template for pop song and go ahead and hit OK and when you close it, uh, hopefully this will close, sometimes Cubase 7.52 gives me some difficulties closing and it looks like it's going to give me difficulties today. But anyway, uh, the next time you go and open Cubase on your screen the project assistant will show that template and what you named it. Um, go ahead and click it, give it a run, and see if that does help you in your songwriting. Uh, it helps me a lot to, to have a template in my songwriting. It also helps me after the song is written as far as a guide and as far as being able to expand beyond what it was that I do. All right, this has been Grandpa Lance at Grandpa Lance's blog. I hope this has been helpful. Visit us again at www.grandpalance.com. Have a good one.